check out this hazard light. Once I hit the hazard light button, as expected, it should turn on all the four indicators and as you can see, the indicators are blinking. Now, once you turn off the ignition, ideally this hazard light should turn off, right? But in this case, it still remains on until you manually turn off the hazard light using the hazard light button. Now, if you think this is directly powered, it's not. Once the hazard light is turned off, you cannot turn it back on until you on the ignition. Now, this is a smart hazard light which is custom built and this type of hazard light will be very useful if you are out on the open highway in the dark and you want to keep your motorcycle parked for some time to take some rest. Wherein you can remove your keys and yet keep the other people informed that your bike is parked on the highway. Now let's see how to build this step by step. The first component that we'll be requiring is a relay. In this case, I'm having a 5 pin relay here, but you can also use a 4 pin relay and you will be requiring two relays of the same. The next one is an indicator flasher, specifically speaking, an electronic one. You can see the pricing on the box itself and this specific one is ideally suitable for all LED type indicators. Now inside you get this flasher relay of which I have taken out the internals and you get this electronic board which controls the flashing of the indicators. You might see a buzzer attached to this electronic board which I have disconnected because we will not be using one. Now if you want the buzzing sound, you can keep the buzzer intact. Now next, we will be requiring few diodes and I'll leave the link to purchase this in the description below. Not only these diodes, all the components that I'm using in this video, I'll leave the link to purchase this in the description below of this video. Now just to explain you the basics, every relay will have a solenoid contact and in this case, it is pin number 86 and 85 and this are the wiring that is black color and the green color in this unit. And this blue color one is a pin number 87A which is a normally closed contact terminal. We will not be requiring this terminal anyways and that is the reason I mentioned that you can use a 4 pin relay instead of a 5 pin one. Now since we don't require this terminal, I'm gonna cut it and remove it apart. Now from this relay, this green wire I'll be using as a negative terminal. But I'll not be connecting this directly to the terminal of a battery or ground. It will be going through the secondary relay which I'll be showing in some time. Now this yellow wire, which in future I'm going to replace it with a red one, will directly go to the battery positive irrespective of the ignition is turned on or off. You can consider this wire as directly connected to the battery is positive terminal. And this one is pin number 30 in this relay. Now you are left with two wires. One is the solenoid positive terminal and the other one is pin number 87, which is normally open one. Now between these two wires, we are going to add a diode which will help in latching the relay in place when you turn off the ignition but only when the hazard light switch is on. Just make sure the negative side of the diode, that is where the silver line of the diode lies, will be facing towards the solenoid side and the positive side which is completely black should be facing towards the open contact side. I will be using a soldering iron to make sure all the contacts are intact and you can follow the same process here. Once all the connections are made, you can use a heat shrink tube in order to protect it against the external environment and also to avoid short circuit. Now off camera, I have also added another diode working as a flyback diode in order to protect the electronics from the high current which is generated when the solenoid get discharged. Again, make sure the diode orientation is proper. Just reverse the polarity where the negative side of the solenoid should be facing the positive side of the diode and solder it as shown in the video. I'll be repeating the same process of adding a flyback diode and I'll fast forward this process for you. Alright, now both the relays are ready for having a connection between each other. Now the first relay which has a diode in between pin number 86 and pin number 87 will function as a primary relay. And the secondary relay is only used to break the connection when you turn off the hazard light switch. Now previously the yellow wire have been replaced with the red one and this one will be a direct positive connection from the battery. Now I am going to connect this yellow wire which is pin number 30 of the secondary relay to the ground or negative terminal of the primary relay. Now through this blue wire, when the relay is activated, it passes negative supply to the primary relay through the secondary relay. Now the next step is to provide the positive supply for both the relays. Now both the supply has to be going through this black wire 
as I already explained to you before. I will be using this 3 pin socket which I already got along with the switch. I'll explain details about the switch in later. Let's continue the process. I will be connecting this white wire from the socket to the secondary relay's positive terminal of the solenoid as shown in this video. Now next, you can connect both the negative terminal of the secondary relay and the blue wire which is pin number 87 in the relay together as a ground. Now off camera, I have also connected the black wire of the socket to the ground connection which is coming out of the primary relay to the secondary relay. Now this leftover red wire from the socket has to be connected to the primary relay's positive solenoid terminal. Now the pin number 87 which is normally open one has to be connected to the board which is removed from the flashlight unit. Solder the pin number 87 wire to the input positive of the circuit board that we removed from the flashlight unit. Now on the other side, use a single wire to connect to the output and we need to add two diodes to split it to both the indicators. Make sure that the driver's positive terminal is facing towards the circuit board and solder it in place. Now after tidying everything up, this is how the entire unit looks like. Now this is the flasher unit itself which I have insulated using a heat shrink tube. Now from the output diode, I have extended two wires which will be connecting to the indicator's positive line. Now this green wire will be the ground connection and you can connect this anywhere on your bikes, ground or chassis. Now this red wire will be a direct positive line. You can directly connect to the battery positive or any other terminal which provides continuous positive 12 volt supply even when the ignition is turned off. Now this black wire will go to the positive supply where it receives 12 volt power only when the ignition key is turned on. And this socket gets connected to the control switch which I'll be showing now. Now let's get installing this onto the motorcycle. Now for the switch itself, I'm going to use this Mad Dog's Pro Series switch, the reason being one of its quality and it has a braided cable which will last longer and is durable. It is also included with a socket connection which I already shown and installing this is pretty easy. Now connecting this entire setup is pretty easy and straightforward. Connect the two wires coming out of the output terminal of the diode from the flasher to the indicator's positive line as shown in the video. Now the red wire has to be connected to the continuous 12 volt power supply which you can find in the ignition socket itself. Now the black wire from the unit has to go to the ignition positive which again can be found in the same socket of the ignition key. Now the final wire is a green one which can be grounded anywhere to the any bolt that you can see in the unit. Once all the connections are made, just connect the switch socket and you are done. You can see all the four indicators are blinking and the hazard light is on and the bike is off and you can see the key is in my hand. Now if I go to the ignition switch and if I turn off the hazard light by clicking this button, it turns off. Now just for your representation, let me show you the indicators are off. Now if someone else tries to turn it on when the ignition key is off, it doesn't turn on again until and unless you put your ignition key back and turn on the ignition. Once the ignition is on, you are feel free to turn on the hazard light. You can see the hazard light is back on and all the four indicators are blinking again. Now, even if I turn off the ignition, the hazard light will remain on and this is a neat and smart feature to have, especially when you're riding out on the highway. Now again, if I turn off the hazard light, it cannot be turned back on even if you try to do it without the ignition key. So now, I hope this video was a perfect one for all the highway riders. And if you like this video, do consider subscribing to Archeonics and follow me on Instagram for more such interesting content.